Hi, I'm Ray and this is the Phone Arena Q&A. Let's take a look at the first question for today, which is from user Ashua Ip. Ray, I would like to know why Sony's display is still inferior to the competitors. Once Sony was great, is this place, even after a significant improvement in experience displays, still display is comparatively inferior. What is the reason, Ray? So, I actually think that this is a very good question for a number of reasons. Now, um, it's perfectly true that Sony's displays were inferior uh, to almost all of the competition in the high-end segment, uh, which includes the iPhone, the Nexus, the Galaxy S, the One, everything. Up to the Xperia Z1, Sony hasn't been using true IPS LCD panels, but a twisted pneumatic display, which has resulted in a viewing experience that is not up to par, due to colors that aren't saturated or vivid enough, as well as uh, very poor viewing angles. So even though the company attempted to praise its displays with their mobile Bravia, X-Reality engines, optic contrast solutions and whatnot, the reality was that up to the Z1, those displays simply weren't up to par. So the good thing about uh, the recently unveiled Xperia Z2 is that it's, uh, it's finally been equipped with a proper IPS screen. Thanks to this, the Z2 screen is visibly improved in each and every area compared to its predecessors. What's more, as some preliminary screen measurements uh, came out already, it looks like the Z2 will not only be much better than its predecessors, but also possibly a leader in its class. And there you have it, the company has finally solved this issue by using a proper IPS display. Another good question by Ashwaip. How come Samsung's 13 megapixel cameras outperforming many competitors' 13 megapixel and even performing close to Lumia's and Z1, although Samsung is also using Sony's sensors? Moreover, why big names like Canon, uh, Nikon, etc., et are not common in mobile phone cameras? Well, it's true that Samsung's camera phones often outperform most of the competition. As far as I know, they are using Sony sensors, but I think there are still some pieces of the whole camera module thing uh, that have to be designed by the phone maker itself. So I guess Samsung is just doing a very good job there. And what's more, we shouldn't forget the software part of the equation here, uh, because it's probably just as important. After all, the Apple iPhone doesn't rely on some camera tech that's out of this world, uh, but it uh, its software algorithms and processing methods make its images come out very appealing, at least for the mass market. So Samsung's approach uh, relies on more natural looking photographs, but I think uh, the way your Galaxy smartphone processes those images is just superior to most of the stuff that's out there. And that's how Samsung's cameras end up with better looking photos. And when it comes to Canon or Nikon or those uh, kind of names out there, I guess they simply aren't in the position right now to make something happen in the mobile market or aren't interested or something like that. A question by Slavit Tudorov is what follows. Will we see any phones in 2014 with the NVIDIA's new chip featuring the powerful Kepler graphics? Well. We obviously can't know that yet, but I can make a relatively educated guess here, as I do believe that most of the upper mid-range and high-end smartphones in 2014 will be using Qualcomm's Snapdragon chipset. The first ones, like the Xperia Z2 and the Galaxy S5, uh, have already been unveiled and they will have the Snapdragon 801. And the smartphones coming out in the second half of the year, I believe, are going to be using the Snapdragon 805 chip, mostly. When it comes to the new Tegra processors, we'll probably uh, have them in some random phone here and there uh, this year, but I don't see Nvidia taking uh, major foothold in mobile, at least this year. It's simply because Qualcomm offers a very complete and appealing package with its Snapdragon processors, uh, which integrates uh, good uh, silicon design, LT functionality and great performance all in one. So it's obviously more beneficial for phone and tablet manufacturers 
to stick with those products as opposed to experimenting with Tegra. But I certainly hope that the Nvidia will catch up soon because it's not really fun having just one company out there. A question by Wild Twin Viking shifts the focus onto Windows Phone. Do you think Windows Phone OS shows promise and has better things to come in the future? Is it heading for a slow loss in market share, forcing Microsoft to stop producing Windows Phone OS? Yes, I mostly think that Windows Phone shows promise, though it seems that this promise remains mostly unaccomplished. I don't think Windows Phone will start losing this the little market share it has won thus far, uh, but it seems to me that it'll be at least another one or two years before customers start feeling the need to switch to a new experience. And even when that moment eventually comes, I don't see Windows Phone exploding in share. Still, the modern Windows uh, interface is still young and people are yet to get used to it, so who knows, probably when it becomes more mainstream, people will also start embracing Windows Phone more easily. And finally, I would like to answer a long-running question, and it's what phone am I using and why? Well, I currently use the Xperia Z, and I like it because of the nice design language, the large and detailed display, the great performance and the polished software experience. It does have its drawbacks such as the dull display, but right now I really don't feel an urgent need to upgrade with such a device. So that was all for today's episode of the Phone Arena Q&A, folks, but be sure to post your questions below this video or in our Q&A post over at phonearena.com.